All right, this, is, uh, this lecture is about chapter 35. We're going to talk about plant structure and growth. The main idea here is how plants adapt and grow based on the environmental conditions. And one of the TOK things I want you guys to jot down is uh, that plants communicate chemically both internally and externally. And to what extent can plants be said to have language? So go ahead and think about that, write your thoughts down, and then we'll talk about it in class, okay? All right, so um, cells, when we think of cells, those are the fundamental units of all living things, of course, and tissues are groups of cells with a common function. And when we talk about tissues, we say that uh, they, they are many different types, whether it's in a plant or an animal, doesn't really matter. Um, they're gonna make up these organs and then these organs are gonna carry out a particular function, okay? And there's three basic organs in plants. You've got roots, stems, and leaves, and they're organized into a root system and a shoot system. And anything above the soil level, that's going to be the shoot system. Anything below that's going to be the root system. Okay, so the plants have three basic tissue systems. They've got the dermal, the vascular, and the ground. And each plant organ has uh, all three types of these tissues, and they're just arranged a little bit differently. Okay, so the dermal tissue, um, this is the outer kind of skin, so to speak, of the, of the actual plant. It's going to protect against water loss, uh, physical damage, pathogens, that sort of a thing. And non-woody plants have a stem that's tightly packed. So if you think, I can always, when I um, think about these tissues, like a, a piece of broccoli or something, it's got that thick, hard down and it's kind of got a waxy kind of extra exterior to it and then woody plants of course have this the solid wood in the middle and then they've got the protective periderm on the outside which is eventually going to become the bark all right so the dermal tissue um, if you think about the uh, like the surface of a leaf that epidermis that's going to eventually form that cuticle as well and that's going to provide some protection uh, again um, preventing against water loss disease on all of those types of things and then this vascular system here this is the, the roots, the xylem, the phloem, the things that conduct the uh, sugary, um, carbohydrate-rich um, fluids around the cell, as well as the water and the minerals um, moving through the xylem. And if you look here at this root, um, you can see the or this, this plant here, the root of it's got that fuzzy kind of appearance, and those are the root hairs. And these are just modifications that greatly increase the surface area of the plant, and they really help to... Uh, um, increase the amount of water uptake it, okay? So the vascular tissue system now, this is gonna carry out the long distance transport of materials between the roots and the shoots. And the two types of tissues, you have xylem, you have phloem, of course, and together these things make the steel. And uh, the steel, this is that vascular tissue of whether it's the, the root, um, or the stem just does, doesn't really matter. That's what we refer to as the steel. And in the in an angiosperm or a flowering type of a plant, the steel is in kind of a solid cylinder. Um, in the actual root, as you see here, that purple kind of region from the, the root cutaway. And then the steel of the stem and leaves has kind of a vascular bundle. It's got a little bit more um, kind of organization to it, whether or not it's a monocot or a dicot, but that, that's kind of beyond what we need to know for this course, but it's arranged a little bit differently, okay? So now the xylem, if you look at the xylem here, you can see, um, this is what's going to conduct the water from the roots to the, the rest of the plant. And, and if I back out for just a second here, um, you're going to see that um, right in this region right here, if I make this different color, um, this region right here, all of this, whoops, sorry, we don't want to race. All right, so all of this region right here is going to make up the xylem, okay? And then this part right down here, this bottom part where these holes are a lot bigger, this is in the spring when the water's more plentiful. And then this is the secondary xylem that's kind of laid down um, as the water becomes a little bit more scarce in the summer and that sort of a thing. So um, what you don't see here, this, this of course, this is the, the xylem tissue. And then if this were kind of the outer edge of the tree, this would be the phloem. And the phloem is going to grow in that direction, and this xylem is going to go in this direction from, from this vascular cambium that's giving rise to these types of tissues, okay? So if we go back here now, and we're looking at the um, actual plant. The xylem, the xylem consists of two types of water conducting cells. You've got the tracheids and you've got the vessel elements. And it's important to note that both of these are dead at functional maturity. Okay, so here's your tracheids, and if you're looking at these, these are found in the xylem of all vascular plants. Doesn't matter what type you're talking about, just anything with some fluid conducting has these little tracheids. And in many of the flowering plants and some of the, the gymnosperms like pine trees and such, um, 
they have these vascular vessels, so to speak. And when these cells die, what they're doing is they're kind of joining end to end. So if I back out again and, and, and move to um, this next picture here, you can see um, these things are right through here. This is where they're kind of aligning. And they've got these little pores in them as well. And what they're going to do when they align end to end here, they're going to allow this uh, xylem to flow up the, the cell, um, the water, carrying the waters and minerals. But these pores here are going to allow them to go right and left. You can see where I've drawn at it earlier. The recording kind of messed up. So anyways, these things are, are going to kind of function in that regard to allow the water, the xylem, the water and the minerals to mo move up and down, or excuse me, I should say up the plant. Okay, and um, these vessel elements, these ones are a little bit larger, as you can see in the picture here, compared to the tracheids. Um, they're they're shorter, they're thinner than the the uh, tracheids are, but again, they're just micropipes that are aligned end to end. Okay, now the phloem, this is what's going to transport the organic nutrients from where they're made to where they're needed. So, in other words, from the leaves, generally speaking, to the roots and the shoots of the plant, and then if excess is made, they're going to end up in the sink. Um, known as the fruits, okay? And the, the where the sugar is needed, generally speaking, is, is referred to as a sink, and where it's made is usually re referred to as the source, okay? So these phloem and these sieb tubes, um, the sugar conducting cells of the phloem are usually alive at functional maturity, and the sugar and the other organic types of nutrients flow through these sieb tubes, okay? And these sieb tubes, these sieb plates kind of join the, the various tubes uh, end to end, and there's what's going to allow the fluid to move through these tubes. So the, the sugary carbohydrate rich fluid to, to move through the shoots. Okay, so here's a little um, video going to explain that sort of a thing. Vascular plants produce nutrients such as sucrose in their leaves. These nutrients must then be transported to the rest of the shoot or to the root tips where growth occurs. The leaves are referred to as the source and the shoot and root tips are referred to as the sink. A source is an organ that produces more sugars than it requires, and a sink is an organ that consumes sugars for its own growth and storage. There are two kinds of vascular conducting tissues in plants. Xylem, which conducts water and dissolved minerals, and phloem, which conducts carbohydrates, mainly sucrose. The transport of sugars throughout the plant called translocation, is carried out by phloem cells. Phloem cells are connected to one another end-to-end -end by sieve plates. These are perforated structures that create a direct connection between the cytoplasm of connected phloem cells. Phloem loading is the process whereby carbohydrates enter the sieve tubes at the source. As a result of phloem loading, a high concentration of sugar develops in phloem cells near the source. Phloem loading results in a lowered water potential, compared with adjacent xylem cells, causing water to move from xylem to phloem by osmosis. This influx of water creates a high turgor pressure near the source and lower turgor pressure near the sink, causing the movement of water and sugar from the source to the sink. Sucrose is removed at the sink by various active transport mechanisms depending on the cell type. In some plant cells, a transport protein located in the membrane of a storage vacuole called a tonoplast transports sucrose from the sink cell cytoplasm into the vacuole at the expense of ATP. This reduces the concentration of sucrose in the sink cell, which enhances the movement of sucrose from the phloem cells through the companion cells and into the sink cell. All these events produce a continuous flow of water from xylem to phloem and then back to xylem. Water leaving phloem in the root moves upward primarily due to transpiration, not due to water potential differences between xylem and phloem. All right, so the ground tissue now, this is the um, 
tissue that's going to provide some storage uh, support, um, photosynthesis, that sort of a thing. And it's neither ground tissue nor vascular tissue. And, or excuse me, neither va uh, dermal tissue nor vascular tissue. That's what makes up the ground tissue. And the pith is anything internal to um, the, the vascular tissue and the cortex is anything external to that vascular tissue. All right, so now we have some meristematic tissue that we need to talk about. And if you guys remember the onion lab that we did where we cut off the kind of dried up roots and we exposed those cells that I said were uh, was meristematic tissue, it's perpetually embryonic. It means it can continually give rise to these um, cell types. And we have two uh, types of meristems. We have apical meristems and we have lateral meristems. Now the apical meristem is located at the tips of the roots and shoots. So when we took those onion cells, um, we clipped off the roots that were growing and we uh, um, smashed the, the, uh, the root prep. We were looking for mitosis in the actual meristematic tissue, in that apical meristem. And uh, in these locations, that's where mitosis is going to enable this primary growth, the extension, uh, elongation of um, the shoots and, and the roots and the leaves and things like that. Okay. So now there's some hormones that the um, IBO wants you to know. You've got auxins, IAA, cytokines, and some gibberellins. And the auxins are going to initiate the growth of the roots and the development of fruits and leaves and things like that. And the uh, IAA, this is the indolacetic acid, and this is going to control the growth of the shoot apex. And it's going to promote the elongation of these stem cells. And it's synthesized in this apical meristem, and it gets transported through um, the phloem tubes, um, you know, throughout the plant so that the, the actual stem can grow and elongate itself. Now you have cytokines that get produced in the roots. These are going to promote the branching, the axillary types of growth. And then you've got gibberellins, which is also going to contribute to the elongation of the cells. Okay. All right. So now there's some various tropisms that we need to talk about. And this is just basically the, a response, so photo being uh, light, uh, so this would be a growth in response to light. And, and then you get the uh, absorption of the, the light by the cells and it, it turns on some various genes that allow these things to grow. And then gravitropism is just a, a growth in response to gravity. All right, so the lateral meristem. This is, uh, once this primary growth, this elongation has stopped, now the, the, the remaining growth is due to girth. And this is where the plant is actually gonna get wider, bigger around. And you've got two types of uh, um, lateral meristems. You've got the vascular cambium and the cork cambium. Okay, and the vascular cambium, this is going to lay down uh, um, vascular tissue within the woody plant. So you're gonna have the secondary xylem and you're gonna have the secondary phloem that's gonna go, okay? So from year to year, if we look at this vascular cambium, we can see the rings on the tree. So um, if I back out here and we look at this, you can see the rings on the tree in um, this particular picture right here. These are the rings. And if we count these things, this, you know, this from here to here would be one and, uh, or excuse me, from here to here would be like the spring and then from here to here would be the summer. So, so this entire thing right here would represent one year of growth. This right here would represent one year of growth and so forth. So we could count the rings on the tree and that would give us the, the age of the plant. And we talked about the vascular cambium and what this is going to do, that's going to be kind of right through here and that's going to give rise to this secondary xylem. And then uh, as it pushes out, it's going to give rise to the secondary phloem, which you can't really see here because it's continually being um, pushed outward. So if we look now at this vascular cambium, what we can see is this thing is actually, what it's doing is it's growing in, in two ways. It's going to grow, it's going to give rise to cells towards the inside, the xylem cells, and, and what you're seeing when you saw a tree, uh, the interior of that tree, that's the wood, that's the actual xylem. And then you just have a, a thin, tiny layer of phloem towards the outside that's gonna grow towards the outside. And it's just a couple of cell layers thick, um, and that's what's going to provide all the nourishment nutrients towards the plant. And then this cambium, as this thing is, is getting larger, larger and growing, um, the, the cambium itself has to divide in this direction. So these things are going to continually divide to give rise to the actual girth of the plant. And then as it grows out um, and gets bigger, it's going to be pushing the phloem towards the outside and then the xylem is going to be accumulating towards the inside. So again, you can see here as these things continue to grow, the xylem is accumulating towards the inside and you can see this phloem is accumulating towards the outside. Okay. So now the cork cambium, what that's going to do is that's going to continue to push this periderm out and it's going to get thicker and tougher as it moves out. So uh, all along the way, as we see, this is going to provide the cork 
on the out, uh, outside or the exterior of the plant. And of course, different plants have different amounts of cork. Um, some trees have really thick cork. That's what they make wine corks out of, things like that. And this is just the protective layer for the plant. So you get this primary and the secondary growth. So as this thing continues to grow and elongate, you get the, the primary growth contributes to the elongation, lays down a lot of this tissue, the cork cambium, the, the vascular cambium, that sort of thing. And then the secondary growth from year to year as that tree gets larger, um, that's the secondary growth. So these are going to appear kind of as a ring on that tree. Okay, we said the primary growth, that's the main plant body, the elongation, that secondary growth is the girth, of course, and that secondary growth is going to increase the diameter of the tree, again, it allows you to count the rings like we showed, uh, giving you the age of the plant. Um, so that vascular cambium, again, produces the secondary xylem to the inside of that vascular ring and pushes the phloem, the secondary phloem, to the outside of the ring. Okay, and then the, these, uh, this secondary growth also is due again, like we said, to the cork cambium. This is going to produce some cells that's going to grow inward, but a lot of cells that are going to grow outward, and that's going to continually push this stuff towards the outside. And that's what's going to kind of give rise to the bark, as we'll see here in just a second. Okay, so if we look here now at this sort of a thing, okay, we've talked about these. Now, if we look and if we continue to um, look at this is um, a particular let's do this start over here a little bit so if this is one uh, one year's growth and then we have um, two years growth and then we have say this is the same plant now we have three years growth and so forth if we look at and kind of consider the length of this line right here um, and, and as these things are continuing to grow, remember that um, the xylem is growing towards the, the inside and then the phloem is being pushed towards the outside. So all along the way, if we look, if we consider now that we have this same tree and let's say that it's got a few years worth of growth on it, what you want to look at and kind of consider and think about is the bark. So if, and I'll just kind of draw this um, you know, a little bit bigger maybe than it would be. But if we took all of these lines and added them up, they would be, let's say, the same length as this right over here, okay? And then underneath this now, we're gonna get some lines that are gonna be slightly longer because what they're doing is now they're making up this second year's growth that we see right through here. And then the, the line underneath it's gonna be longer still, okay? And that's because that's going to make up this third year's worth of growth. Because remember, towards the outside, we're continually pushing the phloem towards the outside. So now if we were to, to say, have a tree here that we've got as it grows, okay, continues to grow upward. If we looked at it, we can see that if we were to cut this right here, kind of cut it like this and then flip it up on its side, it's going to look just like this. And you can see why that bark is kind of furrowed towards the outside because the smaller the, the interior had bark on it, that got pushed to the outside. Then it got pushed to the outside and it continually gets pushed out so it keeps breaking apart because remember, it's only growing in the, the spring and the summer. Um, once the season starts to change, the growing season stops. Now next year, you know, the growth again will get bigger and it's gonna push that out. So that's why it's got the furrowed appearance. And then if we look down here at the bottom, we would have more rings down here of course, because this is the part that's got a lot more secondary growth on it. It's a lot older. Whereas if we were to cut it near the top, we would only have a couple of rings because this is all of the new growth. So this is new, okay, or young, and then this is older. And so it's going to have more rings, okay? Now, the last thing I want you guys to think about is this. Let's say we've got this tree that's growing, okay? And then all of a sudden it gives rise to a branch, okay? Is that branch going to continue to move up with the tree or is it going to stay in the same spot the whole time? All right, so just go ahead and think about that for a second. Think what your answer would be. So if this tree continues to grow now, okay, and the branch is growing as well, it's getting longer, okay, the tree is getting a little bit taller. Again, the branch is getting a little bit longer and so forth. If we look at this tree now, this tree is continually getting taller and taller, and the branch is getting longer and longer. Has the branch gotten any higher up? And the answer is no. 
Okay, so uh, once the branch starts to form, the it's never going to get any higher. The, the branches that arise further up on the tree are the ones that are laid down. Um, so then if you were to like say cut this, you would see that this might represent say two years growth. And then if we have one, two, three, if we were to cut this one here, we might see four rings here and that would represent four years growth and so forth. And then cutting through here, you know, this would be older still. So just kind of looking at that, once a branch is laid down, it never goes any higher in the tree, it only gets wider. Okay, and then up near the top, this is the youngest part of the tree. And then down here at the bottom, this is the oldest part of the tree. Okay, so I hope that helped. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you write those things down and we'll be sure to discuss them in class. All right, we'll see you soon.